$229 billion. That's roughly the cost of the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar, the most expensive World Cup ever. That's more than four times the combined budget of every World Cup since 1990. The money goes to two things, stadiums and infrastructure. For Qatar, the country needed both, and it needed it fast. Hosting the World Cup draws massive exposure to the host country. There's tourism, foreign trade, potential for new development, and jobs. And this World Cup is expected to be the most watched ever. There's just one problem. Some host countries don't have the necessary infrastructure or stadiums to support the world's largest soccer tournament, and therefore leave the country in massive debt and constructions that serve little use after the fact. In Brasilia, they decide to build the uh, the opening match stadium, which has to be 60000 That stadium, by the way, was supposed to cost $300 million, because it ended up costing $900 million plus. And the last time I looked, it was being used as, as a bus, de bus depot, place to store buses overnight. There were times where some of the stadiums were out in, in, in areas that seemed to be pretty isolated, or in areas where there, you, know, you could really see the vast socioeconomic differences. So does it pay to host the FIFA World Cup? And is risking the burden of debt worth the hopes for economic gains? Landing the bid to host the FIFA World Cup is a decade-long process. A country has to submit a bid, listing the reasons why it makes financial sense for FIFA and how it may improve the sport's reach globally. This is Jim Kirkus, CEO of the New Jersey Meadowlands Regional Chamber of Commerce, and he was part of the 94 and 2026 World Cup bidding process. The bid process is very, very complicated and it's, it's very intricate. There's lots of parts to it. Uh, FIFA uh, has a, you know, a bid spec booklet uh, that every competing location has to has to meet or attempt to meet. The organization scores proposals off two main categories, infrastructure and commercial. Nine criteria are weighed by varying levels of importance, with stadiums being the most important. Requirements such as number of stadiums, capacity, hotels, government support and transportation all play a vital role of who gets picked to be a host. Tax exemptions are another key consideration. Local governments essentially turn stadiums and venues related to the World Cup into tax-free zones. That's so that FIFA and its sponsors don't have to pay taxes on the revenue generated during the tournament. So let's talk about where that tax-free money goes. The three main money makers are broadcasting, ticketing, and marketing revenue. That all goes to the Federation. FIFA pays for prizes, ticketing, and production. The only money given out to host countries are agreed funds to cover operations. For 2022, FIFA allocated $1.7 billion to Qatar which includes $440 million in total prize money for teams. The revenue, $4.7 billion total. There's a net there of $3 billion. And what happens with the net? FIFA takes about 10% of that for its operations, uh, to just keep organization going and pay salaries and so on. About 10% is kept, and the rest is distributed to the roughly 200 World Soccer Federations around the world to help them develop their programs. Host countries rely on the economic impact derived from the tournament. There are short-term and long-term, and it varies from country to country. Countries better positioned to host are typically the ones with short to-do lists, meaning there's already a network of infrastructure in place that meets FIFA's strict requirements. Just take the 94 and 98 World Cup in the US and France respectively. Since 1990, they are the two countries that spent the least to host on the tournament. Both countries utilize pre-existing stadiums in major cities that had existing hotels and strong transportation systems. A surge in tourism, hotel stays, job creation, and above average spending at local restaurants and businesses are all signs of short-term economic impact. I mean, 94 had a great impact on me. I was born in North Jersey to two Colombian parents. Um, in Colombia, they love their football and their soccer. At that time, I was a Colombia fan. I had the Valderrama wig. Uh, Carlos Valderrama is known for having this big curly hair, so everybody had these wigs, so I was rooting for Colombia. I... This is Alejandro Badoya, midfielder for the Philadelphia Union and a member of the U.S. national team during the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. I just know how much I saw even uh, the local bake, bake shop, bakeries and, and cafes and bars. Uh, well, not really bars. I wasn't. I was only seven years old, but the cafes, you know, we'd go to the local cafe and, and get some food, the Colombian food, and you would just see on the screen there or on the radio just blasting the games and you just see how passionate the fans were. I do know that we've learned tremendous amounts of things from doing events since 1994 about what it takes to be a great host and what it takes to have, get the most economic impact. A lot of that just comes from uh, uh, being in a better position to, to market the region, let the world know what's here uh, and, and how they can participate uh, with us uh, when, when they come here. 
The short-run spike in spending is caused by the fanfare, excitement, and the mass influx of fans following their team from stadium to stadium. The evidence there says, you know, sometimes there's a very modest benefit. The in, employment will increase in, in the hospitality sector or the tourism sector of the economy. Sometimes it doesn't happen. It will vary from city to city. Even with existing infrastructure, hosting the Cup does little in the long run. The U.S. saw positive gains in its GDP per capita, consumption, and exports in 94. France witnessed its biggest gains in imports and exports when it hosted the tournament in 1998. For countries who needed things like new stadiums, improvements to their transportation systems or infrastructure, investments in the billions of dollars are needed to sustain over a million fans. Some have yet to pay off. This is Mon Grincha Stadium in Brasilia, Brazil. It was one of many state-of-the-art stadiums built for the World Cup to hold over 60,000 plus fans. I was able, fortunate enough to play in the 2014 World Cup in Brazil and represent USA. I mean, the atmosphere around the stadium is, is amazing. I and mean, then once you get in, in the stadiums, I mean, you just see these state-of-the-art uh, infrastructure that's been built. And, uh, you know, with all the, the modern amenities and all the modern technology and, and all that thing. So, you know, obviously some of the stadiums in some of these countries, they're just built from the ground up, brand new construction. Um, and the surrounding area might not be the best. In 2014, the Brazilian government budgeted $300 million for the stadium. It ended up costing nearly a billion dollars. Now, it's used as a bus depot. This isn't unique to just Brazil. Countries like South Africa, over half the money spent on hosting went directly to costs associated with stadiums. They had allocated $225 million for stadiums. It ended up being $2 billion. After hosting, South Africa had trouble finding tenants to take over the stadiums. They would cost millions of dollars in maintenance and operations alone each year. The South African government demolished two stadiums to save money. Only the U.S. and France spent below $1 billion on stadiums. Updating hotels and public transport can cost countries billions too. You end up building stadiums that are not needed, and you end up with white elephants. So the money is not only involved with building them and, and creating exit ramps and on-ramps to the highways or roads in order to get to them and parking lots around them. Uh, it's not only that, but once they're built, they have to be maintained. If they're not maintained, they go to seed. Uh, and, and they're tremendously wet, wet, wasteful. And in the meantime, while they're going to see it over a period of 10 or 20 or 30 years, they're occupying valuable, scarce urban real estate. You can't have great economic development into the future if, if, you, don't, if you can't move people. Uh, and, and so mobility is really a big part of that infrastructure. Moving goods, moving people, connectability, walkability, all those things mean so much. Brazil and Russia spent over $10 billion to host. Using the mega event, as justification for investing in its future. For Russia, its investment would reportedly bring in $31 billion over 10 years, though economists are wary that that figure will ever come to fruition. For Brazil, the exuberant spending to host back-to-back -back mega events, the 2014 World Cup and 2016 Summer Olympics, was an effort to showcase Brazil's transition to a now modernized economy on the world stage. The government expected to spend a forecasted $3 billion on accommodations, food, transportation, and entertainment. It hoped to open the country up to an influx of tourism, foreign trade, international development, and improve its geopolitical stance. For Brazil, the exponential cost of new roads, transit lines, stadiums, and hotels only added to the mounting tensions between the Brazilian government and its people. Construction pushed out locals from their homes, with estimates suggesting anywhere from 250,000 to 1.5 million people had to abandon their homes and only a few received compensation. The government has to borrow money. When they borrow money, interest rates go up um, and uh, it, it chokes off economic activity it, rather, rather than helping economic, economic activity. And the notion that because you host the World Cup and you're on the world stage, but being on the world stage for Rio, what happened? It, it was a lot of embarrassment is what happened. Funding for the World Cup's infrastructure reached to $11.6 billion. Nearly half of those proposed projects were never built. Protesters criticized both FIFA and the local government officials, advocating that funding would have been better allocated to the people rather than football stadiums. For the 2022 World Cup, Qatar has spent over a decade preparing for the tournament. It is estimated that expenditure is around $229 billion, and $500 million are spent per week to speed up production. I expect people to, to travel to Qatar from all over the world um, and, and enjoy the games there. Uh, you know, you read about what's happening and are, is everything going to be ready in time? Is everything going to be up to standards? The country needed to build from scratch. It needed stadiums, roads, trains, renovated airports and hotels. At the same time, the country is planning to unveil Qatar's plans for 2030. 
hoping to become a leader in sustainable urban development, technology, and innovation. However, being on the world stage has also brought to light allegations of corruption with FIFA and human rights violations. In 2015, 41 FIFA officials were indicted on corruption charges, stemming from bribery, racketeering, wire fraud, and money laundering. Some reports include bribes from Qatar officials to land the 2022 World Cup. In 2016, Amnesty International reported numerous human rights violations, stemming from the pressure the country was under to meet the 2022 deadline. 1.7 million migrant workers made up 90% of the total workforce in Qatar, virtually all of which lived in below-par living and working conditions and were grossly underpaid. In the midst of this weary backdrop, Qatar is expecting over 1 million tourists, 5 billion people tuning into the World Cup, and, according to one report, as much as $17 billion added to the Qatari economy from the tournament. While that seems like a lot, that's nearly 7% of the estimated $229 billion spent. At the end of the day, for many of these countries, hosting the FIFA World Cup is viewed as an honor. Football is the most popular sport in the world, with over 5 billion fans worldwide. Countries like South Africa have seen some benefits years after hosting. Though the country was hampered with debt and stadiums that have gone unused, the country has seen tourism steadily rising since hosting in 2010. In 2026, the US and North America are looking to replicate success from the 1994 World Cup. To date, the 94 World Cup has been viewed as the most successful World Cup attracting the most fans ever. For 2026, the tournament has expanded, meaning more fans from all over the world will be flocking to North America, spending big on the World Cup. Stadiums are spread across 11 US cities, three cities in Mexico, and two in Canada. East Rutherford, New Jersey, hosted the games back in 1994, and they're one of the few cities to host again in 2026. The overall cost of the 1994 games in the US were low. Stadiums in many cities already had the infrastructure required. An overwhelming number of stadiums used were NFL stadiums. Back in 94, although we didn't have as many soccer stadiums as we have today, we did have football stadiums, NFL football stadiums, college football stadiums that pretty much with small modifications could be used for the soccer matches. Since 1990, there have been 25 new NFL stadiums built, all of which increase the number of fans it can hold. In 94, East Rutherford had Giant Stadium. At the time, it held over 78,000 fans. The newer MetLife Stadium, built in 2010, can house over 82,000. Relative to our economic impact, uh, the state of New Jersey during the process when we were doing our bid and in, in introducing uh, New Jersey to everyone, uh, you know, had uh, hired an outside uh, third party entity to do a basic or an initial economic impact and it was determined that uh, World Cup coming here in 2026 would be in, in excess of $800 million. Since 1930, the World Cup has captivated billions of football fans. FIFA has been able to reinvest funds generated from the World Cup back into both men's and women's football committees worldwide. And amid FIFA's controversies, and whether or not it makes financial sense to host the tournament, fans from all over will continue to tune in with hopes and aspirations of their country winning the World Cup.